That is one of the most complete answers that we've had to that question. Um, so, wow, yeah, that that I'm going to be listening uh, back to that several times over. I think Joanne. And when I started getting deep, diving deep into it, I started realizing that I could actually close the gap faster than I was ever able to do in the classroom. Failure isn't failure. Nobody reaches success without experiencing failure. I do have a friend. He he has a really great saying. He said, um, you know, you need to put your business in a box and tell it what to do. You know, put them in a corner and tell them what to do. Otherwise, your business will completely ruin you. I sort of think that part of doing a podcast is just to find those phrases. I don't know if you... (laughs) Hello and welcome to the Qualified Tutor Podcast, the podcast that brings you the latest in the world of tutoring, edtech and education, and hopefully inspires in you the big change that each and every one of us is capable of. Qualified Tutor is an industry-leading tutor training organization and online tutoring community for hundreds of tutors around the world. This podcast is the voice of this community, where we aim to hear from tutors, teachers, entrepreneurs, coaches, business experts, students, and more from the world of tutoring about what inspires them every day, how they can help tutors like you, and what they've learned about tutoring along the way. The question is, what will you learn today? Hi, my name is Ludo Miller, host of the Qualified Tutor podcast. Today, I'd like to welcome Joanne Kaminsky. Um, as, a, as a brief introduction, Joanne is an advocate for independent tutors who are committed to making the most of their, their knowledge and their experience and, their, and their, their motivation as educators. One of the greatest problems that tutors have is finding a consistent stream of new, interested, suitable students. Now, Joanne has been helping tutors do just this and much more, as we'll find out, since 2012, uh, which is really longer than than most that we have come across in the tutoring uh, sector. Now, much like us here at QT, Joanne believes in the power of of community and and collaborative learning. Uh, And this is one of the mainstays of Joanne's courses that we'll also be hearing about. uh, And we want to tap into that, that philosophy, that ethos today. And... Of course, Joanne has her own podcast, the Online Tutor Business Podcast. So once you're done here, you know where to go next. Um, Throughout 2020, Joanne released uh, around 30 episodes, um, a great kind of bank of resources there, helping tutors understand what they can achieve as a tutoring business owner. It is, it's excellent material. So please do go and check it out after this, of course. Joanne, welcome to the QT Podcast. Thank you for having me. I'm so excited to be here. Yeah, it's uh, it's currently at five a.m. where Joanne is. Um, it's just a, it's a pretty cool and, and relaxed eleven a.m. for me here uh, in London. So um, thank you to Joanne for for joining us at this uh, at this hour. But we'd like to dive straight in, which with our first question, which is Joanne, what is your why as a as a tutor? I started off as a classroom teacher and. I would say that one of the things that I really struggled with as a classroom teacher was classroom management, as a lot of us do. And it wasn't until later on that I realized how much I loved working with kids one-on-one. But, you know, before that, I, I ended up becoming a tutor because I started getting stuck in the politics as I as I started tutoring online, as I started teaching in the teaching world, I, I started rising up the ranks pretty quickly. So after two years of teaching in the classroom, I ended up um, being asked to be able to train the teachers in our reading program, which is called the SFA reading program. And I, after another year of that, I was asked to train the teachers who train the teachers. So I was a, a teacher trainer of, I was like training everybody in our, our reading program. And then after that, I got pregnant and I had my first baby. And I realized that being able to travel around the country and teach in my own classroom 
was getting to be just a little bit too much and maybe not the most ideal situation for family. And so I told the people at my school, um, you know, I'm looking for another job. I, I, I don't think that this is going to be a good fit for me anymore. And they actually offered me the reading curriculums position. And I was like, oh, this is great because then I can work a little bit less hours. So I was working about 30 hours a week instead of full time. Um, and it was like the most ideal situation. I worked there for in that position for about five years. And during that time, I wanted to learn everything about teaching kids to read. The kids at our school were 30% of them were reading on grade level. I taught in the inner city in, in Milwaukee and it, it just broke my heart that so many kids were struggling with reading. And so I really made it my, 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 my future, like to just want to think, okay, how can I help these kids be able to, to read on grade level? It, it just, it, it was like one of those things that like, you go to bed at night and you can't sleep because you're, you're just worried for these kids that are struggling so much. And there were so many of them, you know, it wasn't like it was just 10% of the kids or, or 20% of the kids, it was 70% of the kids not reading on grade level. And so I read an hour a day. I decided, you know what? I want to learn everything I can about teaching reading. I went off to get my master's and, um, and then the, the politics started getting really crazy at our school. I decided to leave our school that I was at, went to another school. 90% of the kids now are reading on grade level. And the politics was even worse at this school than at the school that I was at. And now I have three kids by this point, And I'm just like, oh what, my gosh, what am I doing? I'm not happy with what I'm doing. I don't get to work with kids anymore because I have risen up the, the ranks in the school system. And I decided um, after getting sick uh, and being in and out of the hospital for six months, this is just not the place for me. So I left the school system having not a clue what I was going to do. And I tried out five different businesses in the next year. I failed at all of them. And it wasn't until the next um, the next year that I, I really started to get real serious for myself and said, what do you want to do? And I remembered picturing myself down here, right here, at this exact spot that I'm in right now, looking at a computer and tutoring students. And I was like, that's it. That's what I want to do. Like, I want to work with kids and reading online. And all of a sudden, all the ways to make it happen came in place for me. And when I started getting deep, diving deep into it, I started realizing that I could actually close the gap faster than I was ever able to do in the classroom. You know, in the classroom, I had all these different programs, curriculums. I even trained these programs and curriculums, right? And they just didn't get results fast enough for kids. And so I started taking the best teaching practices when it comes to teaching kids reading and found ways to be able to close the gap a full year with eight to 12 hours of instruction, which, I mean, if you ask any other reading person out there, they'd be like, yeah, no, that's not possible. The only way to be able to catch kids up is for them to read, 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 and read some more. But with the right instruction I have found, they can really close that gap quickly. And, and when I started doing that, that became my why. Like I had tapped into something that I knew other people couldn't do. I could do it well and I could do it consistently. And I, I felt like I had just found like my purpose in life. That is one of the most complete answers that we've had to that question. <laughs> um, so, wow. Yeah, that that I'm going to be listening uh, back to that several times over, I think, Joanne. Um, and also, you've now already sold your reading programs to me. I'd love to know. That you <laughs> <laughs> won't reveal that here and now, and that's OK. Um, so. That's 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 a, a, a kind of background of, of how you've come to one of the areas that, that you work on today. But there are other areas that there are other kind of jobs, other hats that, that, that you wear. Now, one yes. of those as a tutor coach, and I'd like to ask um, almost probably quite a blunt question, Joanne, but that question is, in the realms of tutor coaching, why does a tutor need a coach? You know, I think in the beginning, a lot of us are not coming from a business mindset. 
we are coming from the mindset of we know how to teach. We know how to teach really well. We're passionate about what it is that we do. We love those aha moments and we want to have more of them. And we want to be able to reach out to more students. But a lot of us have no idea on the whole business side of things, how to run our business effectively and smoothly. In the past, the old model was to be able to um, you know, travel to different kids' houses and, you know, just to kind of accept what people wanted to pay us. Um, it, sometimes it would be under the table. It wasn't really run as a legit business until recently we moved online, right? And we started realizing, wait, we can be so much more effective online because we we can we can collect payments right online we can even collect payments like earlier than before our tutoring sessions we can you know save so much time we can schedule our students back to back to back you know there's so many things that that we can do that that allow us to run our business in a legit way and in a more effective way but we don't know what we don't know right and so when you take a look at people who've already kind of uh, gotten where it is that you want to be, you get to skip the line. So if you want, I, I've noticed that every single tutor that I've worked with, they, they start with the same beginning mindsets and the same kind of systems. And they start thinking about, okay, do I need to have contracts? Do I need to have people signing these contracts? Do I need an LLC? Do I need a uh, sole proprietorship? Like they, they start with the wrong questions. And, and, and so when you start working with a coach, you learn what are the right things, the right questions to ask, the right pieces put into place in your business, and you get to skip that line. Yeah, that, that's such a, a, a wonderful angle for looking at that, isn't it? You know, getting mm-hmm. to skip that line, getting to being able to get ahead, you know, that, that seems to be the most powerful reason for, for having a coach, really in whatever profession you're in. is mm-hmm. It's just, you know, you don't know the next steps if you haven't done it before. And uh, mm-hmm. there are people who do know those next steps, um, including yourself. Now, that kind of leads me on to the, the next point that I wanted to, to touch on here. And you, you briefly mentioned it just before about, you know, between going from a teacher to a tutor, you had this year with, with those five businesses. Now, can you tell us a little bit more about what you've learned about your own businesses along the way? Oh, absolutely. And, and, and that's one of the things I think that I just, I love. There was nothing about any of the businesses that I went through that I don't appreciate today. So I actually got, I got kind of reeled on into a network marketing thing by a really close friend. And it was, it was very uh, scammy, didn't feel right. It, it was a weird position, but I learned everything that I needed to know about search engine optimization. And I remember as I kind of went through that process, like, holy cow, being able to get found online. So when people talk about search engine search engine optimization, one of those pieces, not all of it, but one of the pieces is people are going to type words into the URL, into that little space, you know, at the top of your, your screen. And I can tap into that by creating content on those words. And that can help people be able to find me. And that was really, really huge when I got started because I came in with that knowledge, which allowed me to start tapping into getting clients from all over the world. The next thing um, I think that I've learned that is really, really critical is failure isn't failure. Nobody reaches success without experiencing failure. So those five businesses, those failures all gave me that that next piece of information that I needed to be successful. And so I was exactly where I was at when I was supposed to be there. A lot of people start thinking about this whole idea that, you know, I just wish I knew everything that I needed to know right now. But there's so much that we have to learn and process that you would be completely overwhelmed if that happened. You know, learning takes place over time. It takes place over making mistakes. It comes from, you know, having problems, finding solutions, and then finally tidying up your systems. So it's okay to make mistakes along the way. It's what you do with those mistakes and and how you overcome them 
that really is going to lead to the success that you want in your life. Okay, so if you could go back in time, Joanne, would you start that process again? Would you go through those five businesses, failure or not? Would you go through that again to get where you are? 100%, yeah. Absolutely. I wouldn't change one thing because I needed those experiences in order to be where I'm at today. Uh, One of the big things that I learned, um, I started my own brilliant idea off the top of my head. I was like, you know, it would be cool. And I thought it was a cool idea, right? I thought it would be so cool if at that point in time, I had little kids, my husband and I didn't get a lot of time together. I thought, wouldn't it be cool if like families could take vacations to like exotic places? Like, like what if we went to, you know, Alaska and, you know, you go there with these other families and the kids get to read books all about the different places that they're visiting. The parents can have some me time and then, you know, and then you get to experience it. You get to go and like experience the Iditarod and, and the dogs, the sled dogs and, you know, experience all of those things. Like, wouldn't that be awesome? So I created this business called uh, Bright Idea Vacations. The only problem is, nobody is searching for that idea. So things aren't a bright idea and things don't work unless people are actually servicing, like looking for it. And so that was one of the things that I learned over time is uh, you need to know what people are looking for and be able to provide services that meet their needs. And when you do that, it's a lot easier to be able to start your business. Luckily for tutors, there do seem to be people looking for for tutoring uh, and education uh, pretty much all over the world, and and one would hope all three, you know, three hundred and sixty five days a year. So there, there's a message of hope for tutors, is there? Oh, there is, there is. There are so many kids that are struggling, especially after the pandemic, and they 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 need they need people that are caring, loving, patient and knowledgeable in order to take them to that next level a bit like a bit like a coach exactly a bit mm-hmm. like a coach for for a tutor now um i'm amazed at how well these questions are tied together um that that leads me again on to to this point that i mentioned at the start of the podcast about about one of the most pressing points for a tutor one of their, their biggest problems as a tutor is, is finding this this constant stream of of new tutors or, or retaining old you know old students um effectively now i know people would normally have to pay hundreds of dollars to find this answer from you joanne but this is this is the real million dollar question this is the real gold dust what is joanne your number one tip for getting more students as a tutor Don't rely on just one way being able to get students. Every single thing that you can possibly think of, write it down and begin exploring and start doing it. A lot of people, like if if you take a look at like business practices, there there's this thing called guerrilla marketing. And guerrilla marketing is where you just try every single tactic you can possibly think of. And then from there, if you're still not getting experience, it's time to start really taking a look at how are you going about that marketing. So a lot of people, uh, tutors make the same mistake over and over and over again. They think that tutoring is about them, the experience that they have, the, uh, the schools that they have gone to, the years that they have taught. They think that that is the most important thing that a parent is looking for and it's not a parent is looking for somebody that gets their kid likes working with kids like theirs and can get results with their kid so when you start coming at your marketing from the point of view of the parent instead of your point of view and you can flip the script almost that's when you'll start getting more success and you'll start getting more students. I think that's just such a, a well put, such a simply put um, strategy. And certainly when I started, as a, started out as a tutor, you know, I didn't think like that at all. So the question really then is that what you've just said there, 
does not seem difficult to implement. So the question is, why do tutors not seemingly know kind of these practices? And how can we teach tutors that this is kind of their, the approach that they need to take with their, their marketing? I think the big thing is we don't know what we don't know, right? And so we think the most important thing is our education, our degrees, all of that kind of stuff. And at the end of the day, you can be a great tutor and not have all of those degrees. I mean, I've seen it in the school system over and over again. I've seen terrible teachers in charge of classrooms and, and, and teaching kids. And it doesn't matter how many degrees you have. It, it, it all depends on what kinds of results can you get for the students? And I think that's really that business mindset, right? That kind of comes from the business mindset. What can you do for your ideal client? And I think that that's something that a lot of, of people struggle with. And it's the same thing over and over again. Every every single tutor that I work with, uh, it starts from that. And so one of the, the biggest things that they can do, I teach what's called the, the empathy uh, map. And this is where you just ask a couple of simple questions. It's what is your ideal client seeing, feeling, thinking, hearing, doing? What are their fears? What are their dreams? Once you can take those pieces and you can start talking from the perspective of your ideal client, your marketing changes forever. But it's not easy. I do feel like it is something that needs to be taught because we don't know how to flip the script on our own. And so a lot of times I will I will just go through with people one-on-one. -on -one. I'll be like, okay, let's just start from the beginning here. And, and, and that's how they begin to flip the script. They start seeing it. As I start adding more information to the things, I'll, I'll say they're also hearing or they're also seeing because sometimes we don't know. We don't know what they're thinking, right? And so a lot of teachers will get stuck. They'll get stuck on those aspects. Like, I don't know what the parent is thinking or I don't know what they're seeing. And so I'll, I'll say, well, they might be seeing uh, their child uh, getting frustrated easily. They might see their child, um, you know, slamming their door because they're so frustrated. They might see their, their child um, walk away. And, and all of a sudden that like spawns more information like, oh yeah, and they might be seeing, right? And so it's kind of like that back and forth of now they can get into that perspective of the parent. And it does kind of take a little bit of that guidance in order to get there. Yeah, it certainly reduces that kind of distance between, you know, provider and client, you know, tutor mm -hmm. and parent, doesn't it? If you can mm -hmm. put yourself in their shoes. Um, difficult to do sometimes for sure but mm -hmm. um, that if, if there's one takeaway from this podcast listeners then 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 let it be that let it be that putting yourself in the shoes of, of your clients i.e your parents parents you work with I always say your parents I, I don't mean your parents yes 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 <laughs> yeah then then that's a really effective uh, strategy now I imagine that what you've just been a large part of what you've been discussing here the tips and tricks that you have are part of the courses you run Joanne mm -hmm. can you tell us a little bit more about your your jump start course absolutely you know one of the things that I started realizing was that that people need this thing called group synergy that we get better results when we have accountability we have people supporting us and we know what steps and actions to take. I was working with a lot of people one-on-one -on -one and, and sometimes they would get results and sometimes they wouldn't. And then I started putting into practice this group synergy and really creating this group experience. So that's exactly what we do inside of the Jumpstart course is not do you, you don't just learn all of the aspects of, of the tutoring business, like how do I take payment? How do I uh, get students? You know, how do I create my website? You, you learn those basic things. But I think the biggest thing that you, that, that people take out of the Jumpstart program is consistency and support. 
So I've actually hired other coaches that help guide the tutors as well. They join teams, we make it a game and it's fun so that they can all leave. Our goal is to get 100% of the people that join our program to get at least one student or a whole lot more. Because we have this feeling that if you can get at least one student, you'll be able to repeat that process over and over and over again. But now you'll also have all of the systems in place so that you can run your business efficiently. Where do I sign up? <laughs> well, our doors are closed right now. Oh, um, no. Uh, too late. <laughs> <laughs> but we, what, what I do offer is if uh, people go to the, if you end up going to online tutor coach.com slash jump dash in dash 100 you'll be able to learn more about the program you can get on the wait list and the people that get on a wait list even get the discount so if you 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 start that process take a look see if it's something that will be a good fit for you that will help you know when the doors do open if that's something that you want to do great yeah that, that'll be in the show notes below so um don't have to scroll back to listen to, to that url um, <laughs> and yeah and, and you can check out Duran's jumpstart course um just quickly when do the doors open for the next uh, cohort do you know? the next cohort will open in october so we are in uh, the end of week two right now it's a 10 week program and we used to do it in eight weeks and people were just like it's not enough time it's not enough time people were telling me that they felt like this course was similar to getting a business degree. And I was thinking, oh gosh, I hope it's not like that. Like, like but I mean, people do get so much information and they, they learn so much. They, they just needed more time to be able to process and put it through. And so we, we did extend being able to, you know, get that content over two more weeks and we spread the content a little bit thinner so that it's not so, intense for people because you do you have you have assignments that you're you're turning on in you're trying to stay on task and you're you know at the same time all trying to get students at the same time excellent so yeah so you can find that course in the show notes below um and we would you know, highly recommend taking that if if you are looking to to grow that business of yours and and, and to join that community of other uh, participants who've taken that course who've gone on to find their one student or more now my final question joanne i'd like you to provide a, a one word answer to this and that question is do we really like the word tutorpreneur i came up with it so i like it <laughs> <laughs> well then we yes. like it too. yes <laughs> That's the correct answer. I said one word answer. No, I like. I, I think it's. Um, it explains pretty pretty fully what your approach is, and also it it changes the narrative of a tutor, doesn't it? Because mm -hmm. previously, as you talked about at the start, it was under the table. It was come in through the back door of the house. You know, it was you know not be respected as a as a professional. Um, and by creating this idea of a tutorpreneur, you are validating legitimizing formalizing the work that, that a tutor does um and actually on that note um just before we bring this conversation to a close you can find uh, joanne speaking on uh, mike bergen and amy seeley's test and the rest podcast where joanne talks about professionalism in, in tutoring and the importance of that so you've now got two places to go after this conversation ends dear listeners you've got the tests and the rest podcast with joanne and you've got joanne's own the online uh, tutor business podcast so those are your two places to go thank you so much joanne uh, for joining us uh, that's really very very kind um and we would love to invite you back on oh i would love to come anytime thank you so much okay we'll see no you guys worries. next week bye then bye <laughs>Thank you for listening to this episode of the Qualified Tutor Podcast. Whether you're a regular listener of this podcast or you've just stumbled across it, join the Qualified Tutor Podcast group within the Qualified Tutor community 
to stay up to date with our latest news, offers, workshops, and of course, simply to meet other tutors like you. Whatever your level as a tutor, our training courses will be the next step in your professional development. Visit qualifiedtutor.org slash training to find out more about our CPD accredited and Ofqual recognised courses, the first of their kind in the tutoring industry. Your student deserves the best tutor possible. Make that happen today by joining Qualified Tutor.